Welcome. Good morning, folks. Welcome to First Christian Church of San Bernardino, California. I am Rosemary Angelis, your worship leader. Today we are joined in worship by our musician, Cindy Meyer, our media engineer, Daniel Delgadillo, and our camera operator, Judy Westman. Our pastor, Reverend Sarah Ritchie, is offering the message. Today, we will consider what it means to keep alert. Let us pray. Present, pervading, embracing God, we assemble before you, asking you to awaken us. Awaken us with this deep and abiding respect and love for you and compassionate love for one another as we worship together in your name. Amen. So our opening prayer, and join us at home or wherever you may be. Alleluia, hear God's story. Welcome, everyone. We're so glad you're here with us today. It is a cold and rainy day in Southern California. Can you believe it? And we are rejoicing, friends, because we haven't had rain in a, over 100 days since, I think, March the 172 days since last we had rain. So we are rejoicing. Uh, we are thankful for each of you. And I invite you now to receive uh, the gospel. We are reading to you Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13 from the Common English Bible. Hear now the word of God. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten young bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Now five of them were wise and the other five were foolish. The foolish ones took their lamps, but didn't bring oil for them. But the wise ones took their lamps and also brought containers of oil. When the groom was late in coming, they all became drowsy and went to sleep. But at midnight, there was a cry. Look, the groom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. But the foolish bridesmaid said to the wise ones, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps have gone out. But the wise bridesmaids replied, No, because if we share with you, there won't be enough for our lamps and yours. We have a better idea. You go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. <laughs> but while they were gone to buy oil, the groom came. Those who were ready went with him into the wedding. Then the door was shut. Later, the bridesmaids came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep alert, because you don't know 
the day or the hour. This is a word of God for us, a people of God. Thanks be to God. Glory be to the my goodness. For the last eight months since the pandemic came roaring into our lives, coupled with massive social upheaval over systemic racism, and then the election. Oh my goodness, we can't forget the election. It would be fair to say that stress has piled higher and deeper. When I was a student in college, we used to describe PhD students as PhD piled higher and deeper. It's kind of not fair because they work so hard, but you get the drift here, right? We have changed everything in our lives, everything from the way we grocery shop to the way we visit the doctor, socialize, conduct business, attend worship, hello, and vote. And we wash our hands all the time, don't we? <laughs> and we wear our masks, all while remaining physically distanced as we try to put the kibosh on this crazy, crazy virus. All that is good, by the way. It's good. But this constant, constant state of hypervigilance, it does begin to take a toll. It does. Anxiety and stress has produced something called foggy brain. Foggy brain. How's that for a clinical name? There's actually nothing clinical about it. They don't really have proof exactly for this diagnosis known as foggy brain. But let me give you a few examples of what it looks like. And let's see if you have foggy brain. <laughs> How many of us find that long-term planning is virtually impossible? Hmm. How many of us are struggling with poor sleep patterns or a lack of appetite? Or conversely, how many of us sleep all the time and we, we can't keep our eyes open and we eat everything in sight? How many of us find that our short-term memories are shot? Or that the things that used to come readily to our minds, like when you play a game like Jeopardy, <laughs> and you could just answer the questions, and they no longer quite come as quickly. It's just a little harder to reach into the recesses of our brains and pull out answers to questions. Lest any of us feel anxious about feeling anxious? Know that we are not alone. We are not. The constant hypervigilance and anxiety of which I speak, it makes the brain pump out hormones, you know? Lots and lots of hormones designed to help us. They are the hormones that dictate um, the way we respond to fight or flight because we're in this state of constant alarm and concern. So do we fight or run and flight? It's encoded in our DNA, you all. And over time, all these hormones that are cascading through our systems, they are designed to keep us alive, but they can also take a toll upon our brains and our bodies, our physical well-being. No wonder we're all a little foggy these days. When I think about the story of those ten bridesmaids, I look at women who are the ones who are called foolish in this story, and I think to myself, maybe they've been living under stress for a long time, and they're just a little foggy. 
you know, a little forgetful. I mean, they came with everything else. They came with their lamp. They were dressed for the wedding. They were there ready to go, but they forgot oil. Who does that? Even good stress, like a wedding, is accumulative. I mean, how many of you all, when you've gotten ready on the day of your wedding and you've gone through all of it and all the pomp and the circumstance and the joy and you go off with your bride or your groom and instead of, you know, doing the things we think brides and grooms do in the secret of their honeymoon suites, instead of doing that, what do you do? You sleep. I've known too many brides and grooms who said that for the first 24 hours after their weddings, that's all they did was sleep. Because even good stress can pile it higher and deeper. It's like stacking on us, like imagine flapjacks. You know what a flapjack is? It's a pancake, but you pile it up and up and up and up, and it looks so delicious. <sighs> but in this case, the stress is overwhelming. Something has to give. No wonder all ten bridesmaids are sleepy. They're stressed out. It appears, as I said, the only difference between the wise and the foolish in this story is that the wise happened to be prepared. They had oil in their lamps, and they had a little extra oil just in case, whereas the foolish did not. Which leads me to considering what it means to be alert. How are we alert in this time when hypervigilance has been the key to our response to this pandemic and all the other stressors that have been piling in upon us and weighing down upon us for these past several months? For example, how might we refill the tank to keep the flame burning? You remember the song? Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. I won't do the rest. <laughs> Yay, that some, the, the people who are here are applauding that I'm not singing anymore, but you know that song, Give Me Oil in My Lamp, Keep Me Burning. How do we do that in times such as these? The short answer to that question is something that has been given to us and handed down through the ages. It's called contemplative practices contemplative practices. If we want to avoid fro uh, foggy brain, see, I just did it. I called it froggy bane. <laughs> froggy bane. I'm telling you, it's even happened to me. Froggy brain, the way to help avoid it, put it off, maybe deal with it a little, is to put contemplative practices into our lives. If we want to avoid it, Turn off the television. Turn off the streaming services. Walk away from social media and gaming just for a moment or two every day. You don't have to do it the whole day. Just for a little while. And then engage in contemplative practices that take us outside of ourselves. I mean, for some of you, that might mean practicing yoga or some other specific kind of meditation. It might mean reciting a favorite prayer, singing your favorite hymn, reading scripture. To be an alert person after all is to be one who has spiritual insight that goes beyond one's own self-interest. If we all practiced controlled breathing as we inhale and exhale, we might feel better. For example, how's, we'll try it, okay? As we inhale together, we're going to say, fill my cup, Lord. And as we exhale, 
we're going to say, I lift it up, Lord. Let's try it. We'll do it three times. You ready? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. Lift, lift it up, Lord. Perhaps now, in this moment, we can concentrate upon something other than ourselves. You know, another simple contemplative practice is called prayer walking. Just take a walk through your neighborhood and pray. Let us pray for our neighbors. You know, even the ones that drive you nuts, (laughs) the ones who don't cut their grass, or their kids are noisy, or they park in front of your driveway, or, you know, those kind of people. Or they frustrate you, or even scare you. You know, we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Even the nicest houses have difficulties behind the doors. Perhaps it's time for us to walk unobtrusively into the lives of our neighbors, and offer our loving kindness. If the five so-called foolish bridesmaids had taken the time to pause for a moment every day leading up to that wedding, maybe if they'd done a little contemplation, a little yoga or breath prayers, or, or read their favorite scripture, well then perhaps... They would have remembered to pick up the oil for their lamp at the local hardware store on their way to the wedding. Then this story might have had a different ending. As spiritual people, you all, we believe in the hope of the risen Lord. A Lord who empowers us even in the time of pandemic. So we are called to pray unceasingly, unceasingly to be watchful and fully awake as we fight against our inclinations to turn inward and fall asleep. We know we're doing it when we don't notice that our neighbors are hurt, struggling, Hungry, cold. That's what being woke means. And it's tough, you know. It's tough when we are stressed out, we're afraid. But you know, as we look around our communities, at our next door neighbors, around our own hometowns, uh, among our church friends, indeed the entire world, Oh, we are called to be on the front lines of fighting the malnutrition of the spirit, not just the body. Our world needs our intercessory prayer. Our neighbors need our loving kindness. And you know, our families and those whom we mentor They need us to show them the way. They need us to show them how to do it by keeping alert and prepared even in the midst of an apocalyptic-like pandemic. So may each of us breathe in the Spirit and exhale the love of Christ wherever we are. Amen. Friends, now is the time for our prayers of the people. You're invited to pray wherever you are, wherever you find yourselves. And then I will offer a pastoral prayer. And then we together, we will say the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray together.
Lord of light and salvation in whom we trust, give us peace in our hearts and keep us loving. Give us joy in our hearts and keep us praising. Give us love in our hearts and keep us serving today and every day. We offer our prayers of healing and hope for an anxious world. We are worried about the pandemic. We are either elated or deflated by politics. We are anxious for cures to be found, children to return to school, neighbors and friends to return to work. We are alarmed by our troubled environment. Sometimes the stress is too much and we find ourselves fogged in and overwhelmed by discouragement, but then, then we turn to you and we feel a breath of fresh air blowing through our souls. We thank you, O oh God, today for our veterans and all who have served this nation faithfully. May you bless all active duty military and their families who, though they are not serving, they are waiting. May you love them and care for them. We thank you for each of them, O oh Lord, and we pray that there may be peace on earth so that there will come a time when we do not need militaries, when the armaments within our midst become plowshares. Replace our worries with joy. Exchange our anxieties and alarm with hope. Help us, O oh Lord, to pray for one another and love one another as you first loved us. We lift all who are sick to be healed in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for those who mourn to be comforted. We lift up children, their caregivers, and teachers as they navigate distanced learning. We pray for our nation to be healed as we thank you for your many tender mercies, we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I invite you to sing with us, Living for Jesus, just one verse, the first verse. Let us sing together. Thank you. 
Well, we all are aware that Veterans Day is coming up this week, and I'd like to thank all of you veterans for your service and your sacrifice so generously, generously given for all of us. And at this time in our service, we need to consider and search our hearts as to what uh, we can generously contribute to continue our good works in this church, in our community, and in our world. The offerings will now be accepted. Dear Lord, we ask that you bless these gifts given and may they be used in furtherance of your love in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. In this place of peace, the sanctuary, this is where we come to be at peace. And yet we also need to be awake and alert. Mm -hmm. We need to pay attention. My gosh, we may have to look a hymn up in the hymnal like I just did. We may have to rush and grab our communion. We may have to greet our friends or listen in on all of those announcements. The irony of all of that paying attention in a normal course of worship is that this is what really matters right here at the table of the Lord. Paying attention as Jesus invited everyone to come, including us, to enjoy the bread and the cup together as one. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord took bread. When he had blessed it, he broke it, saying, This is my body that's given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. 
And in like manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you remember me until I come again. Let us pray. O holy Lord God, we give you thanks for this holy meal. As we eat it together, may it be a time of contemplation. May you bind us together. Amen. Let us eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Our closing hymn is, In the Bulb There is a Flower. We're singing verses 1 and 2. Let us sing together. much everyone for joining us today uh, in worship. We're so glad you're here. We pray that you have a wonderful week and now receive the benediction. May the grace of Christ our Savior, the love of our Creator, and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us forever and ever. Amen. Amen.